Thank you, Director of Ceremony, invited distinguished guests, participants. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, global challenges, climate change, and the outbreak of the deadly pandemic of the 21st century has taught us lessons that is no longer business as usual. Oh, I'm everywhere. Going Where forward. <laughs> COVID-19 has completely no, changed my... the world in an oh, unprecedented way. I was hoping a sofa way. by now, but oh well. It not, has affected good. Was good. both the developed and developing nations. Yeah, just sit right there. No one was yep, spared in terms of education Thanks. delivery. Thanks. However, pandemic as well as other <laughs> mic wasn't on. global no, challenges like has indeed created opportunities for all sectors, in particular the health and education, to behave differently and to think out of the box. In my country, for example, in Namibia, education could stand still if we didn't have the existence of our open school, the Namibian College of Open Learning, NAMCOL, which saved us safety net to rescue the education delivery using open learning methodologies. We were forced to leverage the use of open education resources development by NAMCOL for all secondary levels education to reach all learners during the lockdowns. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is involving leading a disrupted economy's fast growth of unemployment rate and increasing poverty. Because these changing circumstances, education institutions have to find innovative approaches that provide qualification with a strong foundation of lifelong learning in building wealthy economies and prosperity. We need to develop innovative strategies to address these emergency challenges. The 21st century itself requires a labor force that is innov innovative, creative, critical, and possess the ability to communicate effectively and partner with others in diverse and multicultural work and environment. Institution needs to change to sustain current activities and to ensure growth. Well-planned innovative approaches in the education sector can lead to increased access, inclusivity, and ensure effective services delivery. Ladies and gentlemen, innovative is not a quick fix. It's a collective and collaborative process of making changes to the already established system by introducing new approaches that add value to customer and contribute to growth of organizations. Innovation is about ensuring quality, fit for purpose, and value for money. We have the responsibility to ensure that our students understand the purpose of education and what value it can add in addressing individual and societal needs. Innovative approaches to our sector must be able to ensure better services delivery, improve turnaround times on feedback to students, and reduce costs from both students and institutions. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not the one making a speech. Allow me now at this age, at this stage, to introduce somebody who will enlighten us on this subject. But before I do that, I was fascinated by the thought provoking remarks by Dr. Maxim Jean Awis Lewis, president of the CEO of the Contact North, on his first day of the important conference on the, the do's and the don'ts. It's good if we can reflect on that one again. It is now my distinct honor to introduce our keynote speaker, 
Mr. Mohamed Rezwan, founder of executive and executive director of Shidulai Swaniva Sangasta in Bangladesh. Mr. Rezwan invented a floating education school to ensure access to year-round and quality education in flood-prone regions. Rezwan and his floating school have been included in the school textbooks and primary of, of primary and secondary classrooms worldwide. Today, there are 700 floating schools around the world. Mr. Rezwan is a recipient of numerous national and international awards for his idea, including the Carison Design Prize in 2017 and the Sri Santa Sai Awards for Human Excellence in 2016. He was identified as an Earth Hero in the Earth Heroes book published in the UK in 2019. Also recognized as a climate rebel in the Climate Rebels published by Penguin Random House. He was elected as a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts in 2014. And you believe me that on Wednesday, although he was not physical here, he, wa he was one of the recipients of the award which was given, provided. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome our keynote speaker, Mr. Rezwan. Thank you to the Commonwealth of Learning and Athabasca University for inviting me to this conference. I am honored to have this opportunity to talk at the 10th Pan Commonwealth Forum on Open Learning. My name is Mohamed Rizwan and I am from Bangladesh, a country always affected by floods. Climate change has increased the flooding in recent years. It prevents students from attending classes and people have to struggle for survival. We have decided not to let floods get in, in the way of education. We have developed the floating schools, classroom on boards, a school that goes to the student when the student cannot go to school. Today I will tell you about our resilient community and initiatives that allow people to access education and information, new skills, grow traditional flood resistant crops and improve livelihoods. Now I will show you a short video on our work. <clears throat> Bangladesh is located in South Asia. It has a very high population density. 168 million people live here. More people live in Bangladesh than in all of Russia. Here 35% of the population lives below the poverty line. In Bangladesh, many parents are reluctant to let girls go to school. Therefore, 1.5 million primary school age girls are out of school in the country. It has the fourth highest rate of child marriage in the world. More than 50% of women suffer from chronic energy deficiency. Bangladesh is the lower Riparian of three major river systems of South Asia, the Ganges, Brahmaputra, Meghna, and over 92% of annual runoff generated in this catchment area flows through the country, making it one of the most flat prone regions in the world. One fifth of the country floods annually, but extreme floods cover up to two thirds. According to the intergovernmental panel on climate change, 16% of the land will be lost to the sea, resulting 20 million climate refugees by 2050. 
The Climate Central's Bangladesh map is on this slide. The red mark areas are the lands at risk of flooding in the future. Not only do floods cause the loss of lives and livelihoods, but it also severely interrupts children's education. This orsens the already high number of out-of-school children in the country, now at 4 million. Schooling opportunities are very limited for the extremely poor, children with disability and for those living in hard-to-reach areas, particularly in the flat prone areas. Here, land-based schools struggle against floods and river bank erosion. The river is known as destroyer of establishments in the local community, and school buildings hit by the river have to relocate to safer ground. A native of Chalenville, a vast wetland, I saw firsthand the hardship of riverside communities that have no access to information and opportunities it affords. With roads impassable during monsoon, students cannot make the trek to school. Therefore, it is common to see school dropouts in this region. But my family owned a small boat that ensured my travel to school during the monsoon season. But I saw many of my friends and relatives couldn't go to school. It was difficult for me to accept the situation. I thought, as an architect, I should design exciting things to help the poor in our own communities. If the children cannot go to school for lack of proper transportation, then the school should go to them by boat. I believed in this idea of a floating school or community as I was influenced by the local culture of living with nature and local people's coping capacity. But I didn't find anyone to invest in my idea. Therefore, I started working as a social entrepreneur and founded the non-profit organization Shidulai Shanivar Shansla. Shidulai is the name of a village. Shanivar means self-reliance and Shansla means organization. I founded the non-profit organization in 1998. With the income from my, own, my other projects, I was able to build the first flooding, flooding school in 2002. It was about 20 years ago. Our organization builds and runs the school boards in the north, northwestern parts of the country, where road access is very limited and boards are the only viable year-round transport. In our flood-prone regions, communities live near rivers or canals and off the electric grid. Here roads to school gets flooded in the monsoon season. Flooding school is a combination of a school bus and schoolhouse. It collects students from different Riverside villages and finally docking at the last destination, the boat arranges on board class. After the class, the boat drops students at the places and then, and then move forward to pick other groups. This is the way a floating school works throughout the day and arranges three classes. Each floating school consists of a classroom for 30 students, an internet linked laptop, on desktop, hundreds of books and electronic resources. School provides basic, basic primary education up to grade 5. Floating school provides education 6 days a week. The boards use its solar energy to run computers. Solar power also enables school to provide evening class to the working children. So when school is done, many students take home the recharge through hurricane solar lantern. The students having good exam results receives the Sura Hurricane Solar Lantern as scholarships. Our floating schools follow the national and our own river-based environmental curriculum that teaches how to protect the environment 
and conserve water and biodiversity. Now our organization operates 26 school boards that serve 2,340 students in a year. 100% of floating school students graduate at the end of five years. Over the last 20 years, 21,000 students graduated from floating schools. About 17% of the graduates have been employed and the rest are involved in agriculture and business. Schools were closed in Bangladesh for 18 months due to the pandemic. One of the longest school closures in the world. Due to the school closure, there was an increase in child marriage in rural communities across the country. Many girls have been married without registration in different villages, involved in child labor, and finally dropped out of school. Considering the huge societal costs of closing schools, we discussed it with the communities, parents and teachers and particularly what the school board should offer meanwhile. In case of no COVID-19 positive cases in the village, where floating school, floating school operate or neighboring communities located within 2 km, all the stakeholders strongly encouraged floating schools to provide continuity of education for their children in the most appropriate accessible ways. Therefore, we introduced courted homeschooling and floating school with five students activities. During the peak months of COVID-19, May to June, the floating schools ensured continuity of education through the schooling of, schooling of the courtyard homeschool groups. The school board picked up the teacher from her home and traveled to the first station of village where she taught the first homeschool group, not more than five students gathered in a courtyard. These children are neighbors and their parents like to homeschool them together. The students took lessons together for 40 minutes. After the class, the school board took the teacher to the next homeschool group. In this way, a school teacher taught three groups in the courtyards in a day. And each homeschool group had three classes or sessions or 120 minutes of lessons in a week. During the monsoon season, July to October, the project areas went under flat water and we operated school boards. Each floating school collected a group of students, not more than five children at a time due to the COVID-19 restrictions. From a village or station and docking at the same station, the boat arranged on board class. The duration of the session was 40 minutes. After that, the school board moved to other groups. In this way, the floating school worked throughout the day following a fixed route. Each board arranged nine onboard sessions in a day. Each student group attended three sessions or classes or 120 minutes of lessons in a week. None of the girls starting on the floating school got married during the pandemic, as the floating schools avoided education disruptions by school board and courtyard floating school courtyard homeschool groups. It protected children from coronavirus infections by ensuring immediate vaccination of COVID-19 to the teachers and field staff and by adhering to school hygiene rules. It was a challenge to operate the school libraries during the COVID-19. It is open for limited hours in two shifts every day. An hour between these shifts, shifts allowed the boatmen to clean the boat. The field organizers work in shifts and only one library user with face mask was allowed to enter the school boat to limit 
the risks of infection. The staff carry temperature checks at the entrance. The school boat has a sub bottom hull which can travel in shallower water. The multi layered water proof roof can withstand heavy monsoon rains. The metal beams take the weight of roof, so the interior is not obstructed by pillars, making the accommodation spacious and comfortable. There are side windows that are open for daylight and ventilations. The smaller school boat is about 55 feet long and 11 feet wide, with a main cabin, cabin that can fit 30 students. The two-tier school boat is about 65 feet long and 13 feet wide. The construction details are based on the wooden boat building heritage of northwestern Bangladesh. The school boat is built by local boat builders with environmentally friendly materials including wood and bamboo. The school board's performance and durability are considered for selecting the woods. Shawl or shawl tree, Shoria robusta is used to is used for hull construction, which is durable and has the natural chemicals to prevent rot. It gives the board a lifespan of over 50 years. In 2017, we introduced educational playground on boards. It has a classroom, playground, computer center and an observation deck. During the daytime children can play on the upper deck and youths are trained on the lower deck. Youths receive training on solar powered classroom. The center teaches youths on water quality monitoring, river cleanup, protection of environment and biodiversity conservation. The center uses a blended approach of face-to-face -face and technology-based learning. The observation deck is located in the sun deck to provide a view of river, canal and wetland. Here children interact with nature which helps them to understand the importance of natural environment around them and take care of it. Rural population does not have reliable access to grid electricity. They rely on, rely on traditional creation lantern for lighting. We have shared both surplus energy with them and introduced the Sura Hurricane, an innovative low-cost solar lantern made from recycled parts of the traditional and much-used creation hurricane lantern. The Surya Hurricane solar lanterns benefited the low-income families by improving their work capacity due to better and longer light and income opportunities. The improved light enabled children to study in, in the evening. Also, the families used the solar lantern outdoors including for fishing and field work at night. Our training board is equipped with internet linked laptop, multimedia equipment and educational presentation. The center teaches girls and women on sewing, computer skills, integrated floating farming and flood resistant crops. Laptop connected to the internet through the cellular network provide connection between users and experts. Also, the center teaches women and girls about choices and opportunities and prevention of child marriage. 75% of mothers and female caregivers of children enrolled in floating schools have a savings of an amount of Taka 13,500, which is equivalent to 130 US dollars. From May to June, the training boards ensured continuity of agricultural information delivery by providing training to the courtyard training groups. 
the training boat picked up the trainer and traveled to the first station of village where the trainer taught the first training group. It was a group of five women who were neighbors and liked to get the training together. After the training, the boat took the trainer to another location where he taught a new group in a courtyard. In this way, the trainer trained three groups in the villages in a day. And each group received six sessions in a week or more, and the duration of each session was 40 minutes. During the monsoon season, the training boat offered onboard training sessions with only five trainees on board. At the evening, education programs are arranged on large, large sailcloth so that many people can see from their own courtyards. The evening shows provided information on the climate change adaptation, southern eastern rice, local almond, BRRI 29, and other crop varieties. Growing spices, prevention of child early and forced marriage, balanced diet, nutrition and health, women's access to education, mobility, and decision making making in a changing climate. The short shows displayed the COVID-19 details including physical distancing, when and how to use a mask, coping the stress during COVID-19, and information on COVID-19 testing and hospitals. The staff used with tutorials, presentations, and documentaries to share the information with the participants. 65 Particip participants change their behavior as a result of the evening educational programs. The training boards disseminated Google's flood warning messages by showing the Bangla videos on big screens during the evening shows in various website markets and stations. We introduced farmers floating farming that combines the vegetable garden along with duck and fish raising on water. The floating farm is moored by rope to the river bank. The local community is strongly involved into the project and it helped the, our work uh, to sustain for such a long time. The strategies we use to en engage our local community include forming youth groups, social mobilization, responding to community feedback, and integrating content with local tradition and knowledge. These strategies help to build trust, develop culturally acceptable solution, and enhance the program delivery. It helped community to become a partner in development while improving their livelihoods and environment. Our project has created new employment, developed assets and improved quality of lives. It has helped people to get out of extreme poverty and helped landless families to live with rising water. We reach 159,000 people annually through our different types of programs. Uh, we have floating libraries also and also we operate floating healthcare centers. We have learned lessons from our projects which are school board reduces the demand of school or training infrastructure or facility in the platform areas. Where where um, you cannot build a, a school on the lands. We have learned that design and building boats with traditional knowledge, local labor and materials can bring sustainable impacts. Also life skills, trainings to youth can enhance critical thinking skills. For ensuring community members' attendance, 
we need to create local communities involvement and ownership in the project we have to develop innovative approaches with the involvement of local people and we should develop their capacity including local staff members and community We have to understand and address the information and training needs of youths. For creating sustainable impact, we have learned, learned that we should believe, one should believe in his or her own work, share ideas with others, listen to the people, take their feedback. and develop ideas and innovations respecting the traditional knowledge, traditional technologies. And the sustainable impact also requires developed capacity of local people. My school would idea which I started it about 20 years ago, has been recognized by the United Nations funds and programs, including, including UNICEF, UNEP, and UNDP. They recognized our shooting school as an innovation. My work with floating schools has been included in the school textbooks of primary and secondary classrooms around the world. Since 2010, the impacts of our floating school inspired other NGOs to start similar activities. Today, our life-changing innovation has spread beyond the borders of Bangladesh to eight different countries around the world. In the German state of Bavaria, teachers, students, parents, boat builder, carpenter and architects have recently built a large wooden school board and placed it on the rooftop playground of the new school building of Campus di Monaco International Montessori School Manic. The board used the design of my school board in Bangladesh. The Montessori school wants to promote tolerance and cohesion in a visible manner by using Bangladeshi innovation for climate change. 500 people participated in a celebratory boat rally for tolerance under the theme Our boat has room for everyone and escorted the school board to the school building in Munich. Changing climate is expected to cause more severe and more frequent floods and cyclones around the world and the coasts will grow more vulnerable. If that were the case, it is likely that the major Population movements will walk out towards other large urban settlements in the interior of Bangladesh. The large cities, which already have serious resource constraints, will have to accommodate millions of migrants from coasts. In such context, floating community is one of the options. People have to understand and learn how to live and grow crops on water. We should not wait for for the resources to come to us, as it might take time. Rather, we should go ahead with the ingenious solutions like floating school, mobilize the resources by ourselves, and help people in need. The lives of more than 2.8 billion people worldwide were disrupted by flooding between 1980 
and 2009. 10% of the population worldwide live less than 10 meters above the sea level and in a high risk zone for floods. About 75% of them live in Asia. Therefore, the local communities, including educators, need to share ideas and work together to develop ingenious solutions to solve the local problems for ensuring a sustainable future. Thank you. আমার নাম মোহাম্মদ মেহেদি হাসান সুমন আমার বয়স পনেরো বছর গ্রামের সবাই কৃষক তারা কৃষি কাজ করে এবং কৃষি কাজের জন্য এই নদীর উপর নির্ভরশীল নদী আমাদের জীবনের অনেক গুরুত্বপূর্ণ একটা বিষয় বিনোদনের জন্য সাঁতার কাটি এবং নদী দিয়ে কৃষক তারা কৃষি কাজ করে এবং কৃষি কাজের জন্য এই নদীর উপর নির্ভরশীল মোহাম্মদ রেজওয়ান আই এম আর্কিটেক্ট and I am the founder of a non-profit organization, Shidulai Shonibar Shansta in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, we used to have six seasons. And because of the changing climate, now we have two or three seasons. The big season is the monsoon. When the water comes during the monsoon season, this area gets flooded. People cannot grow crops, houses get isolated, Children cannot go to school because all the ways to school gets flooded. I thought if the children cannot go to school, then the school should go to them by boat. We started the flooding school in 2002. <laughs> My idea was to bring education, information, and all the basic services to the community. With these services, their children will have education, that will not only help this generation, but it will help the future generation. I am a pastor of the school. 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 I am a pastor of the we teach young people water quality monitoring, river conservation, the relationship between people, river, relationship between river and ocean. I mean, no guy school a potom, no dike, man, no di rocker, Dushon rockers or no. I mean, school a potom, Poshikon is on the very sea. মানে আমি উৎসাহিত হই যাতে আমাদের নদী দূষিত না হয় আমাদের এই বিষয়ে মানে ট্রেনিং দেওয়া হচ্ছে আমরা এটা অন্যদেরকে মানে সচেতন করতে পারছি উই हैव डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ बोट्स উই हैव बोट्स फॉर स्कूल्स लाइब्रेरीज ट्रेनिंग सेंटर्स हेल्थ क्लिनिक एंड रिसेंटली वी इंट्रोड्यूस द फ्लोटिंग प्लेग्राउंड Here they develop motor skills, social skills, they improve their problem solving abilities and they develop confidence. On the top we have an observation deck where they get to know their environment. We say that they get bird's eye view. আমি এই নদীকে রক্ষা করতে একটা জিনিস করতে চাই এই নদী মানে নদী রক্ষার জন্য আইন প্রণয়ন করতে চাই এবং নদী যাতে দূষিত না হয় সেজন্য আমি এই নদী দূষিত হলে আমাদের সমুদ্র দূষিত হবে এজন্য আমাদের নদী জনগণকে জনসচেতন করতে চাই ইন বাংলাদেশ आवर লাইফলাইন ইজ দ্য রিভার आवर পিপল দে ডিপেন্ড অন রিভার ইফ দিস রিভার লিভস we live and we have to save it. <laughs>